Okay, this one's a little weird for me. I read Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami in 2014. I give it four out of five stars on Goodreads, and I wrote this about it shortly thereafter. Murakami is the perfect kind of fiction for me. His abstracts are a complete departure from my everyday life, and he never fails to challenge me to consider alternate takes on reality in the mind screw manner that is my favorite vehicle of all artistic experience, be it book, movie, play, or anything else that the creative can create. Even though this is not my favorite of his, this particular book probably threw Murakami up to the top of my favorite author's list. What is our mind? How does it exist? How do we perceive it? Is it real? How is it different from our brain? What is the story that we continue to tell ourselves? In this story, he explains one way to consider those things and more through a fantastic, intense mystery. It's a Murakami matrix and long before the movie was made. I totally recognize that his methods are not for everyone, but I'm a fan, and more so after reading this book. So there's a lot to unpack here with this one. I talk about Murakami going to the top of my favorite author's list. We just made a Tom Robbins playlist in after the last review, and part of me reading these books back to back was like getting in touch with my favorite authors again. So that is definitely happening here, and Murakami is that too. I've talked about in the Tom Robbins playlist about the concept of abstract fiction, something that is described here, and I think I mentioned it in one of the reviews, in Goodreads, they talk about it as magical realism, which I think is interesting too. I don't know if either of those are official genres, but it definitely connects to what has historically been, as I mentioned in the review, my favorite vehicle, my favorite type of fiction, my favorite type of story. That is something that's become kind of challenging for me in my old age. I love mind bender kinds of things. I love movies like Inception, Interstellar, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, all these things that get you to dive deeply into the way you experience the world and what the world is. I'm, to be honest, like I'm, I'm having to take kind of a break <laughs> with that stuff lately because it's gotten so intense for me. The whole world and chaos and really considering our place in the world is, is something that's been really a struggle for my mental health. I was reading recently, uh, one of the books that I was reading that I had to put down was Jim Carrey's book. I think it's called Memoirs and Misinformation. I started reading it. It's not gonna end up in the series because I had to, I had to give it up. One of the quotes, and I might be messing up the quote a little bit, is he says, I think right at the beginning of the book, maybe it's even on the back of the book, that all of this is true and none of it happened. <laughs> And that kind of mind bender is historically the thing that I love. I even did a short podcast at one point about it with Tommy. It's great. I love those kinds of things. I love those kinds of movies. I love all those kinds of things. But maybe my brain is getting a bit tired of it. I remember when I watched the most recent, the I guess it is the fourth Matrix movie, the one that they came back and put out again, Matrix Resurrections, I think it was. They talk about this whole thing where Neo or Mr. Anderson is a game designer and he designed the game and all this stuff. And I remember just watching it and just feeling my head get like, fuzzy, like warm and fuzzy and confused and, and actually kind of scared. So I'm being more conscious of, about how I consume this media going forward to sort of give my brain a break and allow myself to uh, enjoy it for what it's worth and for the fun things that are in here to think about. But there's other books on this list that I'm gonna talk about that do it too, because I love these kinds of books. And if you do too, I understand. And I wanna talk about it as much as I can handle these days, even as I give myself that rest. I won't go back to Jim Carrey's book because it tripped me out so much. Maybe if you want to talk about that, you can connect with me here about that too. But this is a good one. This is a one, again, it was written before The Matrix, and Murakami is just such an interesting author. I talk about his abstracts here as something that's a complete departure from my everyday life, and they are super interesting. And then to think about conceptually the fact that these things are written in native Japanese and then translated and the beauty and the specialness of the writing still comes through. I think it's fantastic. So I've read a number of his books. I also have Dance, Dance, Dance in this collection. There's a number of others that I've read that probably won't show up, but yeah, Murakami and Tom Robbins are right at the top of my list because I love that magical realism, abstract fiction. It's something that is really special to me in fiction. And when I have, oh, and I just finished a book, so I'm about to go into one that might be like that too. It's the second one of the Southern Reach trilogy, which you may have seen the movie Annihilation. The book was the first one. So I might try that, but I might not get all the way through that because it's the same kind of thing. So if you like that kind of book, I'd love to chat about them and how it relates to this book and all these others that I've talked about too. So this one again is Hard Boiled Wonderland and the End of the World by Haruki Murakami. I give it four to five stars on Goodreads. There's more interesting and vulnerable ones coming up. Till next.